Hello there, amazing viewers and subscribers, and welcome to a brand new Doctor Who epic video for today. As you can tell, I've kind of changed my room around again, so I've kind of put all my big features at the back of me. With the DVDs and Blu-rays now on the shelf going into season order, where I've kind of put all my DVDs into a little box and put them under me TV cabinet, just because with the Blu-rays coming out, I've only got space to have one stuff, so I'm trying to shorten out my kind of collection stuff. So anyway... Doctor Who, hey, this brand new Doctor Who video, what is it going to be on? Well, I was asked if I could do a video on my three favourite stories from each incarnation of the Doctor from Big Finish and, of course, the TV side. Uh, guys, I haven't really done, I've only just started diving into the books, the BBC book range, and I've only got, basically, McCoy, Bake, Tom Bake, well, basically, I've only got Tom Baker, McCoy, McGann, Heckelson, Tennant, Smith and Capaldi on book. I haven't really dived into any of the other Doctor's books. So I was asked if I could do a video on my favourite three stories from each incarnation of the Doctor from TV and Big Finish. So I thought, you know what? Yeah, this is actually a kind of an interesting topic. So what are my three favourite stories from each incarnation of the Doctor? So are you sitting there comfortably? Good, and I shall begin. So, for the first Doctor, a.k.a. my three favourite stories for the first Doctor are... So, in third place, it has to be The War Machines. The War Machines is just an iconic story, and the first Doctor really does show he won't be intimidated by The War Machines, where you've got all the unit, like all the soldiers basically running around, being scared like chickens, and the Doctor's just there going like that, and he's not being intimidated. That's actually quite cool. In second place, it is the Dalek Invasion of Earth. Now, this used to be my all-time favourite story, but I've rewatched a story from season one recently, and basically it's kind of moved the Dalek Invasion down to second place. The Dalek Invasion of Earth, it is a fantastic Dalek story. And it's one of my favourites because one, we got that Dalek when we've got that iconic shot of the Dalek coming out of the Thames. And you've got the Doctor and Ian basically being captured by the rubber men when Ian goes, When I give the word. Turn and dive in the water. Now and they just go like that. And like, the dice just comes out of the Thames. And of course we have that epic goodbye scene to Susan. Where the Doctor locks out the ties. And he's saying goodbye to her. Because now he knows that she's becoming a woman. That she can't leave. That she won't leave him. But he thinks it's for her own good. And I love that goodbye speech. One day I should come back. Yes I should come back. Until then there must be no regrets. No tears. No anxiety. Just go for it. All your beliefs. And prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. I really love that speech. And then, of course, my first and all-time favourite Hartnell story has got to be the Aztecs. The Aztecs, for me, it's absolutely brilliant. It's absolutely iconic. And I just absolutely just flat out love it. I think it's brilliant and fantastic. And I really do enjoy the Aztecs. I mean, you cannot rewrite history. Not one line. Believe me, I know. So, I do kind of think the Aztecs is a fixed point in time. The Doctor can't really interfere with fixed points in time like we do know when the show gets into the modern era with basically fire to Pompeii so yeah I kind of enjoy that story in second doctor now so for my three favorite stories for the second doctor so in third place I had to put the power of the Daleks now this is Troughton's very first story as the second doctor and he comes across the Daleks and this story is actually written by David Whittaker, who is actually a good Doctor Who writer who can actually handle the Daleks really, really well, apart from Terry Nation. And he actually gets the Daleks spot on as well. It does echo some of the elements from the first Dalek story, where you've got the Daleks using static electricity, and the second Doctor's basically got to use that electricity against the Daleks, which is kind of cool. And I absolutely love it. In second place, and my second favourite story for the second Doctor has got to be the Tomb of the Cybermen. I love the Tomb of Cybermen. I absolutely do. I think it's iconic. I think it's amazing and brilliant. I love the Cyber Controller. I love the Cybermats. And I love the Planet Terras. And then my favourite heart, uh, my favourite Troughton story completely is, of course, The Invasion. Now, The Invasion is just an iconic story. Eight parts episode of fantastic, of being fantastic. Earthbound, we've got units. Introduction to this one, we have the return of Nicholas Courtney, a.k.a. Alistair Gordon Leopard Stewart, and this time he is a colonel, not a brigadier. That's later on in the Pertwee era. And I really did like the Simon's design in this one as well. Absolutely brilliant. So, for my three favourite stories for John Pertwee, now these are the three I actually do absolutely enjoy, and these are the ones I do actually quite have to be honest with you. These are my three favourite ones. So, in third place, I had to put Planet of the Spiders. Now, 
Some people don't like Planet of the Spiders, some people do. Me, on the other hand, I flipping love it. I really do love it. Now, Planet of the Spiders, it gives John Pertwee the best partly swung song for the third Doctor. Now, the reason I say that is because, one, we've got the third Doctor absolutely becoming the most James Bond Doctor, where basically you've got car chases, you've got the Doctor in a helicopter, you've got Brigadier, Sergeant Benton and Sarah Jane and Bessie, you've got Lint uh, Lutton, who's basically being controlled by a big giant spider on the back of him because of the Metal Blues Crystal. I love when you've got them talking and you've got the little going, I'm early Tommy Hood. Hummerly Tommy Hood, Hummerly Tommy Hood, and then of course you've got this big giant spider. I love the fact we have a big giant spider later on in the episode where the Doctor gets radiation poison from giving it the Metabolius Crystal and the Doctor basically ends up absorbing radiation poisoning and it does lead him to regenerate into Tom Baker, which is one reason why I love it. In my second favourite John Pertwee story has got to be his first fave, his first ever story, aka Sparehead from Space. I actually consider this to be a masterpiece. It really sets off the 17s really well. It really sets up the unit stories really well. And of course, we have the Autons being introduced in this story as well by Terence, uh, not Terence Stick, sorry, by Robert Holmes. And I really love the Autons. I really do like the design. I love the fact we have the Neptune Consciousness big um, octopus squiddy thingy, and I quite enjoy that as well. And Liz Shaw is brilliant. And then, of course, for my first ever favourite John Pope story, is the Sea Devils. I cannot talk about how much the Sea Devils is absolutely fantastic. Honestly, I just cannot find a flaw in it. I absolutely love it. It's six parts long. I love the fact we've got the Doctor and Joe with the Royal uh, with the Royal Navy instead of being with Unit. I love the fact we've got the Master in the prison. You've got the Master basically becoming in control of the prison and basically contacting the Sea Devils. And then he's there trying to make an alliance with the Sea Devils. So the Doctor basically tries to interfere and stops them. And of course, it does lead to the Doctor basically reversing the, polar the polarity of the neutron flow to basically destroy the Sea Devil's base. I actually quite enjoy that one. I really do. Then, of course, for the fourth Doctor now. So my three favourite fourth Doctor stories. Now, I struggle with Tom because Tom is my all-time favourite Doctor. And there are so many iconic stories of his I physically enjoy. So I had to do... The best I can. So in third place, I had to put the brain of Morbius. Now we go to the planet Khan. We've got the sisterhood, the sisterhood of Khan. We have a, the Time Lord brain of Morbius being put into a jar, and basically the evil Doctor, can't remember his name, needs to make a have a head to put Morbius's brain in, so Morbius can come back to life. Yeah, I actually quite enjoyed Brain of Morbius. It's a very gothic horror sort of story. Like as I said before, it really gives you that Frankenstein vibes, and it's done absolutely brilliant. I really love it. In second place, it is the City of Death. I cannot say how much times I have loved this story. It's brilliant. It's amazing. It's the City of Death. What can I tell you about it? Well, I really love the film location work in Paris. I really love Scarif. I think he's an interesting villain. I really do enjoy Tom Baker in this one because Tom Baker has some iconic lines. Oh, he probably thinks you're a beautiful woman, though, probably. <laughs> I see. What a wonderful butler. So violent. <laughs> I really love Tom Baker in this story. And Liana Ward. Absolutely brilliant. And then, of course, my favourite Tom Baker story has got to be Genesis of the Daleks. Flat out, Genesis of the Daleks, it is the most iconic Tom Baker story anybody will know of. Even a non-Doctor Who fan. If you mention Genesis of the Daleks, people go, oh, is that a Tom Baker one? Because I have had it happen to me before. When I'm there at Comic-Con, and basically I was talking to this person who only knew who only knows about New Who. So when I mentioned that he should really go and check out Genesis of the Daleks, he goes, I think I've watched that with my dad. And I'm like, you probably have done, because Genesis of the Daleks, it is a masterpiece of a Dalek story, and absolutely brilliant, and I do love it. So, for the fifth Doctor now, aka Peter Davison, my three favourite stories from the fifth Doctor. Well, in third place, it is Earthshock. Earthshock is flat out amazing. It's the most brilliant Simon story ever. It's my second favourite Simon story in total. I absolutely do love it. I really do enjoy this story. I really do love Earthshock. Now, some people say it's so much a bit like the same story plot as Revenge of the Simon, but it's done so much better. I really do like David Banks' Cyber Leader, and of course we have the death of a companion for the first time, aka Adric, since 1960s, when we kind of see the death of Katrina and Sarah Kingdom. Again, I just absolutely love Earthshock. Earthshock is just brilliant. In second place, we jump into the five Doctors. I cannot state how much I flipping love The Five Doctors. It is just a pure, amazing story. And I just absolutely love The Five Doctors. Now, it, we're on Gallifrey. We've got the Time Lords. We've got Barusla. We have the return of, basically, the very first appearance of Rassilon. 
We have Richard Herndot as the first Doctor, Patrick Trent as the second Doctor, John Pope as the third Doctor, Tom Baker didn't really want to come back to film after two years they've left the role, so which is understandable. So, yeah. The Five Doctors, I had to put this in second place because it is the most iconic story I can ever say that I've loved about the Fifth Doctor era. I really do love it. And to be honest with you, this was actually my very first ever piece of the Fifth Doctor I actually ever watched with my dad. This was the very first one because we were stopping over in Market Drayton with my granddad at the time. And the Five Doctors came on and me and my dad and my granddad, we watched it together. My dad and my granddad absolutely talked about how much they watched it the first time it aired on BBC One. And I'm there really wanting to go back in time just to watch the story be aired for the first time. And I really do love the Five Doctors. It's absolutely incredible. And then, of course, my all-time favourite Peter Davison story, aka my second ever Fifth Doctor story I ever watched, The Caves of the Flipping Caves of Androzani. These are just flat out amazing four-parter. Davison has a really dark storyline in this one where basically he gets caught in this kind of drug drug raw kind of smuggling going on. He's stuck in there, he's stuck in this situation. Nothing the doctor can do is basically the doctor can't really do nothing because the events, if the doctor never went, the events would still would have happened. But he he had to try and get him and Perry out of there. And every time he did, it just got into the situation the situation got worse and worse and worse which led to the doctor basically dying of spectroxemia but he did give the only cure to perry and i really do love that story for it so for the sixth doctor so my three favorite colin baker stories now all three of these stories are from season 22 season 22 it is the best colin baker season ever i flipping love season 22 if I was going to say what's my favourite style of Colin's outfit, it's the one from season 23 with the red cavat and the red, pink stripy waistcoat with the pink chain, with the green chains. I have flipping love that look, but my favourite season of Colin is season 22. So here are my three favourite stories from that season. In third place, I had to put Ventures on Varos. Ventures on Varos has basically come in third place, I think, after recently I rewatched the whole of season 22. Revelation of the Daleks has really moved into second place and kind of swapped places in between these two. I love Vengeance of Varos. I really think it's a great, dark, gruesome story. I really love the way how it builds up. It does pan out basically the 45 minute episode times limit and it's done so well. As I said, number two is, of course, Revelation of the Daleks. Again, we are into another two parter. We've got Davros on the planet Netcross, basically turning people into food that aren't basically being mutated into net cross daleks we do have a little bit of a dalek battle going on between the renegade daleks and the net cross daleks after the daleks have come to arrest davros i really love the way how davros is there fools he is the doctor the doctor me no he does not match the reference of the doctor he has regenerated the fools I absolutely do love this episode. It's absolutely brilliant. I absolutely love it. And then, of course, my favourite Colin Baker story is Attack of the Cybermen. I can't really say much about Attack of the Cybermen because it is very, very lore-heavy in the episode. I mean, it's a sequel to... Basically, it's a prequel to The Tenth Planet and it's a sequel to Tomb of the Cybermen and The Invasion. I just absolutely love it. I think it's an iconic story. It's absolutely brilliant and amazing. And I just absolutely love it. So my three favourite Sylvester McCoy stories. A.K.A. my three favourite Seventh Doctor stories. So in third place, I had to put Paradise Towers from season 24. Now, this story has actually grown on me a lot since 2021. Because the amount of times I've rewatched season 24 on Blu-ray, this story has actually grown on me quite a lot. Especially the extended version of it. I just absolutely love Paradise Towers. I think it's a fantastic story. The way the Doctor basically manipulates the guards so he could escape is very, very McCoy to me. I absolutely love Mal. Mal basically, I find Mal very, very irksome, specifically in Trial of the Time Lord. And this season, she actually grows on me quite a lot, which is why I'm really looking forward to seeing the return of Mal. So just before season series 14 is going to air, I'm going to go back and rewatch season 24. Because I absolutely think it's actually quite good for Mel. Yes, her screaming does my heading, but the storytelling is actually quite good. My second favourite story for Sylvester has got to be Remembrance of the Daleks. I just absolutely love Remembrance of the Daleks. I think it's a fantastic Dalek story. It has a fantastic epic Dalek battle between the Imperial Daleks and the Renegade Daleks. I love the Special Weapons Dalek. I love the fact we're in 1963 and the Daleks are basically going after the Doctor because the Doctor basically left the Hand of Omega there when he had to leave all of a sudden when Ian and Barbara find their way into the TARDIS. And I really do love that. Absolutely brilliant. 
And then my all-time favourite McCoy story is, of course, The Curse of Fenric. I just absolutely love The Curse of Fenric. I love The Heaver Falls. I actually love Fenric himself as a main villain because I love to see Fenric return and battle against a future incarnation of Doctor. I just absolutely love The Curse of Fenric. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, for the eighth Doctor now, so I had to go for big finish for this one, for territory for the eighth Doctor, because the eighth Doctor's done more big finish than there is for TV Universe of him. So, third place, I had to put like the end. Now, I actually love this multi-Doctor story. Paul McGann and Tom Baker get on really, really well. They're absolutely brilliant together. The two Doctors are fantastic. I also have to be honest with you, I actually do love when you've got the five, six, and seven Doctors together in one tie, so you've got eight and eight and four together. And the way all the Doctors come together then to try and stop the Master, played by Jeffrey Beavers, once again, I think that's an absolutely bi bionic, fantastic story. I just absolutely love it. Number three, The Great War. So the first story to open up the Dark Eyes kind of saga. Now, Dark Eyes is my favourite series for the Eighth Doctor. It introduces us to Alex McQueen's Master. I was going to put Master of the Daleks, where you kind of got Alex McQueen basically becoming in charge of the Daleks. But I kind of have to say Great War, because it does set up the whole lot really well with, like, with the whole elements. And you got this other Time Lord Dane X, basically played by Toby Jones, going after Molly O'Sullivan. The Doctor is basically, at the beginning of it... He's trying to basically go to the end of the universe because he's lost so much with the death of Lucy Miller. Now, I haven't really listened to her death, so I'm quite looking forward to diving into the series series three of the Eighth Doctor Adventures just before I get to, you know, Dark Eyes. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And then, of course, I had to put Hoff House in number one. Hoff House, it is a fantastic story for the Eighth Doctor. So the Doctor and Lucy Miller return to Earth where we come across again, but in audio, in audio, Against the Crinoids. Yes, I've always wanted the Crinoids to return to Doctor Who. I really have really wanted them to return. And this is the way they do return in audio. And I think it's done absolutely brilliant. It really makes them have that horror presence. So for the War Doctor, again, I've dived in for Big Finish of what I've listened to. So in third place, I had to put the Emergent Dim Dimension. Where you kind of got the Doctor and Leela having to stop themselves. Basically come across against the Dalek Time Controller. And I really love it. I just think the Doctor and Leela, even though the Doctor is basically in his war incarnation, the two of them get on really, really well. Then, of course, we have the Lady of Abyssian. Again, that's the very first story that introduces the War Doctor to Leela, played by Louis Jameson. And I really love it. I think it's a fantastic way to bring a classic companion into the Doctor's life when he's in this very gruesome, dark period of the Doctor's life in the Time War. I think it's absolutely done brilliant. And then, of course, I have to put the Innocence. So the Doctor basically loses his memory... For the first half of the story. He does regain it when the Thomas go looking for him. But he doesn't want to be a warrior. He just basically wants to be left alone. And chill, like, chill out. Before he goes back into the front lines. Back into the war. And I absolutely love it. I think it's brilliant. So my three favourite stories for the Ninth Doctor. So in third place I had to put Rose. This is a fantastic opener to the new era of Doctor Who. Heckleson's brilliant. Billy Piper is brilliant. I really do prefer Billy Piper's character Rose. With Heckleson more than I do with Tennant. A.K. in Series 2. I really do not like Series 2 because of the whole lovely Dove stuff. But Rose and Billy Piper have done so well in Series 1. Rose is done an absolutely brilliant episode. I love the return of the Autons. I think it's fantastic and a great way to start a new era of Doctor Who. In second place, we go into Bad Wolf and Parting of the Ways. Yes, this is my favourite finale for Modern Who so far. And I absolutely love it. Now, we've got the game station with Big Brother and all that. You've got Captain Jack basically... Coming across the road, Bartson, he has his gun somewhere in his body. And they ask him where he's hid it. We've got the Doctor on Big Brother, which is actually quite funny. Doctor, you are welcome to Big Brother House. Please do not swear. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I really love that. <laughs> Best way to open an episode. I love the reveal of the Daleks at the end. In Bad, in part of the ways, basically where it continues on from Bad Wolf. We have the return of the Dalek Empress. It's 1967. I love the fact how the Knife Doctor has to absorb the time up vortex from Rose and it does lead him to generate into Tenant. And then my favourite Heckleson story has got to be the Empty Child and the Doctor Dances. So we are in World War II. Very, very gothic type of horror story with body gas mask zombies walking around going, I am my mummy. What's not to love about this episode? I really love it. So for the 10th Doctor. So in third place, I had to say the Impossible, the Impossible Planet and Satan's Pit. 
fantastic for not fantastic two-parter of series two now i don't really care for series two but this is one of my favorite episodes of that series now i love the ood i love the creepiness of the beast since it's the, the voice that plays the beast is actually the voice that did the voice of Sutek in 1975. So I really love the fact that we have a classic actor lending his voice once again. And it's done so well. And I really just love that two-parter. Second place, I had to put the Stone Earth and Journey's End. So basically, the, the time the 10th Doctor basically regenerated from his 11th incarnation into his 12th incarnation. But basically keeping the same face. And of course, the Metaphor Crisis Doctor. We have all the Doctor's past companions from the RTD era come together to fight the Daleks. And it's also the return of Davros for basically 20 years. The return of Davros in 20 years. And I think it's absolutely done so brilliantly and epic and well done. And then, of course, my all-time favourite tenant story is The Waters of Mars. The Waters of Mars is my all-time favourite tenant story. As I said, it is a fantastic base on the story. I absolutely do love it. I I can't find a foot wrong with it. I know I've watched other YouTubers moan about this story. And I'm there going, I can't actually see what they're on about. What do they like about it? Out of all of the Tenet episodes, this is my favourite one. This is the one I go back and rewatch quite a lot. And the way the Doctor just snaps into the time of Victorious is done so well. The 11th Doctor. So my three favourite Matt Smith episodes. So in third place, I had to put The Snowman. This would have been number one. But I rewatched all of Matt Smith basically back in August. And Matt Smith's episodes have really changed in the ranking. So I do have a ranking episode coming out for that. The Snowmen. I absolutely love it. Now we are in the Victorian times. We have the return of the Great Intelligence. Now I believe this is the second ever appearance. The second the Great Intelligence has ever encountered the Doctor. Now I say that is because the Great Intelligence timeline is very, very complicated. Because we have him in the Abominable Snowman. Then of course we have the Snowman for Victorian. Then of course we have the night. Um basically the web of fear for the 1960s where the, the, the he comes across the second doctor again then he comes across the 11th doctor again in the bowels of saint john then of course in the name of the doctor so the great intelligence timeline is very timey wimey and complicated between two incarnations of the doctor i absolutely love the snowman though because i think it's an absolutely iconic christmas episode and i do love it number two the day of the doctor do i have to really say how good the day of the doctor is now we've got the return of the zygons it's 1975 we do have Tenen back as the 10th Doctor. Basically, the 10th Doctor in this point in his time stream is in his 12th regeneration cycle. Basically, still the 11th Doctor, but the 10th Doctor, but he's in his 12th regeneration cycle. Since he kind of cheated death by putting his regeneration into the, the spare hand in Stolen Earth and Journey's End. I absolutely love Dev the Doctor. I think it's a fantastic story. John Hurt is absolutely brilliant as the War Doctor. Great way to introduce him as well. I really love it. I just think it's a fantastic story. And then my all-time favourite Matt Smith episode has got to be The Eleventh Hour. Now, The Eleventh Hour used to be number three, where The Snowman used to be my number one. But these two have kind of swapped over because Matt Smith really has the best episode from the word go. No post-regeneration trauma. He's still basically regenerating when he meets young Amelia. But he still gets into the action really, really fast, where it took Tennant basically... Out of a 45 minute episode, it took 10, literally half an hour just to get into the action for his Doctor. And I'm like, I mean, it's one of the reasons why I don't like 10 that much. Because of the slow, I really don't like him from the beginning. I really find the Christmas invasion really crap. And then the, the end times really crap as well. But the 11th Doctor, instead of being like what 10 did, where he literally just stayed in bed for most of the episode. He gets into the action with Prisoner Zero. He tries to stop the Atraxi. Again, absolutely brilliant. Number 12. Yes, so in 12th place for the 12th Doctor... My three favourite 12th Doctor episodes. What are they? So, in third place, I had to put Mummy from the Aunt Express. I mean, I just absolutely love this episode. It's really fantastic. It's a fantastic episode for Series A. I really love it. Capaldi nails the Doctor down for me in this episode. Where he I love the fact that he runs up to the foretold and he goes, I am the Doctor and I will be your victim this evening. Are you my mummy? I really love that line. It really makes me laugh every time I watch it. The way the Doctor's there trying to work out how he's going to stop Gus and the Foretold and the way the, well, the Forsaken. And he's there trying to work out how to do it quite quickly. And that there's 60 seconds between each person's death. So when he literally takes the woman's fear and puts it into him. And he's there start the clock and he's there counting down to 60 seconds. And he's there working it out really, really fast how to stop it. That's so much the Doctor. That is so much the Doctor to me. And that's what I love about it. Heaven Sent is in second place. Heaven Sent, it is the best episode from Series 9. Now, Heaven Sent, the Doctor is on his own. He's trapped in his convention dial. 
and he's there stocked in there for 4.4 billion years and the way it all plays out so well for us viewers the capaldi does it so well and he does it so brilliantly as well the fact that he knows it's the time laws but he doesn't give in he literally gets breaks it i think at one point he's there thumping through the diamond wall and i really think it should have broke the doctor's hand technically and it always knuckle but he doesn't he smashes through gets through to gallifrey goes to a child tell them that he's back tell them that i've come the long way around absolutely brilliant fantastic and then my all-time favorite capaldi episode is a trilogy aka world enough in time the doctor falls and twice upon a time now some people class the finale to series 10 and the christmas special basically their own kind of thing I kind of class these as a trilogy because the story basically does continue on where you got David Bradley's introduction at the end of the Doctor Falls and it does lead into the time like into Twice Upon a Time, which is absolutely brilliant, which is one of the reasons why I love it. I think it's fantastic. Um the other reasons I like this, it is a multi-master story for the first time in Doctor Who history. Now it's not the first time it, well when I say Doctor Who history, I meant the tele right, the televised history of Doctor Who, when Big Finish multi-masters have met before in the two masters way before this story was actually ever written and of course we have not one but three versions of the summon we have the 10th planet summon man we've got the rtd summon and we've got the moffat summon which is one of the reasons why i just flat out love it it's absolutely brilliant and then for the 13th doctor so for joji whitaker here are my three favorite episodes of the whitaker era so in third place spy four parts one and two spy four what can i tell you about it well it is a fantastic two-parter we have the return of the master, played by Sasha Dewan, and a fantastic performance, by the way. I do love the Costarving. They are very interesting villains. I would like to see them return at some point. The whole bit with all the spies dying and stuff really does not drag me into the story. But when you get to that finale, that cliffhanger to part one, where you've got basically the master revealing himself, and this is a trap for the Doctor... I even mean, think that's all done so well. And Daniel Bartons is done so well as well. And the fact that basically the plan, the Doctor basically breaks the plan between the two of them. Done so well. Second, my second favourite story for the Whitaker era has got to be Association of the Summon. Which is basically a three-part trilogy again. But I like the first episode, I only like this episode out of the trilogy. I mean, The Haunting of Philly Doty is my basically second favourite of the trilogy. But Association of the Summon absolutely brilliant absolutely flat out brilliant and amazing and just pure brilliancy and i just absolutely love it and then of course number one for jodie whitaker is the power of the doctor i really think power of the doctor this is where jodie feels so much like the doctor to me where basically in some episodes of series 11 or 12 she feels like she's manic in between 10 and 11 and in this episode basically the power of the doctor is where she feels so much like her own doctor and it's just done so brilliantly and well done. Plus, we have the return of Ace and Tegan. I really like the fact we have the Master working with the Summon and the Daleks. Where basically, in World of the Time, it's basically two incarnations of the Master and three versions of the Summon. Where in this one, we got two incarnations of the Master. But technically, it's still the Sasha one, but when the, he steals the Doctor's regenerations and he gets regenerated back. Great cameos between David Bradley, Peter Davison, Colin Baker, Swiss McCoy and Paul McGann fantastic cameos i just absolutely love it and that is my three favorite episodes from each doctor from each doctor so what are your three favorite episodes from each doctor let me know in the comments please do like subscribe share and join for more awesome doctor who content